This video is sponsored by War Thunder. The last major patch installed by BSG changed Tarkov in a way that dramatically impacts how the game feels and plays for every single player in the game. This one single line in the patch notes is the most impactful change they made, and many folks don't even know what happened. On top of that, it's not the complete story and doesn't actually reflect everything BSG changed. What we're going to do here is not only explain the change and how it functions, but lay out why it's important and how it will play out in your fights, as well as provide some ideas and tips with how to deal with it. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to need to break down a couple of systems in the game that either used to be there or are currently there so that everyone understands with what's going on. All of this will show how in certain circumstances, someone you're shooting at while aiming at their chest could be able to tank seven, eight, maybe nine shots from even the highest pin ammo in the game, like M61, SNB, or 762 by 39 BP. We'll cover the other changes to armor and hitboxes and explain the major changes to the armor system later in the video, but let's get the juicy stuff out of the way first. Just don't skip out on that stuff later because it is really important and there's definitely stuff in there you're gonna wanna know. So the big detail, the one you all clicked on the thumbnail for, comes from the patch notes pretty simply stating this. Remove the possibility for bullets to pierce through a character thorax and stomach but first i want everyone to remember though that i couldn't have done this without the incredibly professional help of the tarkov community giving up their time to help us all understand these mechanics better okay maybe calling them professional is a bit too gracious but they're at least helpful most of the time <laughs> But all the same, a huge thanks to everyone who shows up to help discuss and get repeatedly shot in the face in the name of Tarkov Science. But back to the line, what this means is that bullets will not pass through these specific hitboxes regardless of penetration or damage. By the text, this means that no more collaterals through the thorax or stomach hitboxes. A round of M61 or SNB, when it hits that those specific hitboxes, won't carry through and hit a player or anything else behind them. And we tested it quite a bit. But that isn't the whole story. For whatever reason, BSG didn't list that this no pen attribute also applies to the upper arms and the head hitbox. Now, at first, I chalked this up to maybe being a bug, but I'm not so sure anymore. We saw this same thing with patch 14.1, even though it only lasted a day before they rolled it back. And I passed this along to BSG along with the rest of our, our bugs we found, uh, like we usually do. But here we are with patch 14.1.1, and a month into that, and it's still functioning this way. Is it intended? I don't know. But I'm leaning more towards it not being a bug than it being a bug. Now, with what we said before about impenetrable hitboxes, this leaves the lower arms and legs, and oddly enough, the neck hitbox, all allowing bullets to pass through them still as long as the penetration is high enough. Now, it varies, and there's some randomness in there, but figure bullets with 35, 40 pen are pretty much always going to go through those, uh, those hitboxes. Anything less, and it stops. So, that's right. This little sliver of area between the head hitbox and the thorax hitbox still allows penetration. This could point to an unintended behavior with how inconsistent it is, but there are some reasons that I believe uh, this is on purpose as well, but we'll get into those a little bit later. Real quick though, let's talk about the sponsor of this video who takes complex hitboxes to a level most games don't even dream about. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC and consoles. Take control of over more than 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from the early era biplanes and armored cars from the 1920s to modern fighter jets and main battle tanks. Get immersed in each battle with incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sound effects that place you right at the helm of the most powerful war machines of our time. War Thunder has incredibly complex damage modeling systems that take into account not just things like hit points, but actual models, the crew, ammunition, drive systems, and so many more modules depending on the specific vehicle. On top of that, the system is easy to understand and watch because of the awesome damage x-ray system that shows you your kills and deaths in incredible detail. Anyone new or anyone returning with more than six month break will also receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies that are available for a limited time only. So make sure not to miss it. You will join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in intense PVP battles, ranging from arcade mode with simplified physics and ramped up performance to hyper-realistic simulator modes with no guardrails. Delve into the breathtaking experience that is War Thunder with an unmatched wealth of high quality content to discover. There's simply no game better suited for fans of military history. All right, so back to the video. Why does this change impact the game in such a dramatic way? Well, it's a product of how a few mechanics 
interact with one another when we're fighting other PMCs and even scavs. The first of these mechanics, I'm just gonna use Photoshop to sh show you because it allows me to color and do some stuff like that. It's pretty clear to see here when a PMC standing facing you, their arm is covering a portion of their thorax. So here, let me turn their thorax on. This is a, this is a rough approximation of your thorax hitbox not being covered by anything like your arms. But watch what happens when I turn on the upper arm hitbox. This is a rough approximation. It does go lower, but this is the part that covers your actual thorax. Now as shown here, this covers about 27% of the thorax hitbox by the upper arm hitbox. This isn't an insignificant amount. It makes over a quarter of the second most vulnerable hitbox untouchable by any bullet by someone you are facing there or you're shooting at. It doesn't matter if it's 40 pen, 50, 60, 70 pen it stops when it hits the arm. This means your upper arm is now the best armor in the game and you don't even need a microtransaction to get it. Too soon? Maybe. Still funny though, right? But let's take this to the next level and exaggerate it with something that's going to be very, very familiar to folks who played in 2020. The chicken wing stance or the canted sight stance, depending on how you want to call it. Whenever you're using a canted sight, which is right here, I'll zoom in, I'll see if I can zoom in here. This sight on the very top of the, the side of the gun here changes how your character holds the weapon dramatically. Now it looks pretty stupid, right? But I think a lot of people are going to get past that here pretty quickly. So you remember I showed you our normal stance gives you right around 27% coverage, right? So this is the thorax. This is, if you shoot this, you're gonna be hitting the thorax hit pool, if you will, this area. It's a little bit different because of how the character changes their stance, but it's still pretty much the same shape. Now watch what happens when I turn on the arm. The much more dramatic coverage of the hitbox, especially towards the center where most people aim. This bumps the coverage of this impenetrable armor from 27% of the thorax to 41% coverage. Yep, that's right. Of the visible thorax, when you're facing somebody and fighting them, nearly 40% of it isn't able to be hit by any bullet. Even the Russian equivalent of a 50 BMG gets absorbed by our PMC's superhuman biceps. Now to add some icing to the cake, not only is your upper arm impenetrable, once it blacks out, it has a handy little modifier applied to it that all damage it takes. I'm on the wiki here. You can look at this up uh, yourself if you want. But right now, as of doing this video, the right and left arm are the same. But we're talking about the left arm, so we'll look at that. Once your left arm is blacked out or destroyed, any additional ta damage taken will be distributed to the entire body's health pool at a 0.49x the damage dealt. This is a 49% uh, 51% damage reduction. It only deals 49% of damage. So if you have a bullet that does 100 damage, once the arm is blacked, it is reduced to 41 damage. That other damage just vanishes into thin air. So even if you're shooting really high flesh damage, damage ammo, it still takes a ton of hits to kill somebody if you're shooting them in the arms. Now in this clip, I was using 5.56 SSA AP which I did on purpose because it inherently does very little damage, but has high pen. It's good for testing certain aspects of armor and stuff. At 57 pen, it will get through most armors without any issue, but with only 38 damage, as you can see, it takes a lot of hits to kill someone anywhere outside of the thorax or head. Because of the combination of these factors, it takes 18 shots for me to kill this volunteer. Keep in mind, this is a very specific scenario and one that is not gonna be repeated in normal gameplay, but it exemplifies this mechanic. This specific SSAP round only takes three shots to kill the thorax against almost all armor combinations, assuming you're only hitting the chest and not a limb. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna kinda of draw an arbitrary circle, but it's going to kind of exemplify how this is impactful, but it also isn't at the same time. On this character, I have basically cut out a circle of this appropriate hitbox. And this is gonna be center mass. This is where I believe a lot of players aim if they're not aiming for the head. When they get surprised, you're just aiming center mass, high center mass of a character. So we'll call this area your target area. Right here, you only have about 30% coverage with the arm. So if one in three bullets on a spray are hitting the player's arm, it still only takes four to five shots to kill someone with the higher end ammos. This goes down to two to four shots with ammo like M61 or SNB. The point I'm trying to make here with this is that we are all going to see disparate outcomes from this change because of the chaotic and random nature of gunfights in Tarkov. In my opinion, better players are going to be affected less as their aim is more center and often higher and closer to the head. Average and below players, their aim's a little more chaotic and I see this impacting their fights more. Their shots tend to drift away from center mass 
and they don't have as good of recoil control. Now onto the part about why BSG made these changes. Now we can only speculate. I am guessing here, but it's an educated guess based on a lot of research, a lot of problems we've seen, and what I believe are some of the inherent weaknesses with this more advanced armor system. And it boils down to the interactions of some of these weird mechanics. But again, before we get into this, let's be 100% clear. We are about to talk about the equivalent of my Bigfoot or maybe Boogeyman. Either way, my conclusions are based on good data that doesn't necessarily prove any of this out. It just kind of hints at it. Again, it's based on my years of testing observations in Tarkov and its systems and how they all play around with each other. So even with all of that, this isn't proved out, nor is it set in stone. So the two things that I believe push these changes are fragmentation and the exposed thorax hitbox. The first one, fragmentation, I believe was causing many different issues within the game with this new armor system, as well as old bugs that many of us have known about for years. Everything from random one taps from ammo that can't one tap you, to multiple hits on the head, to armor tanking damage it shouldn't, and dozens of others. Now, quite simply, it appears they have turn, turned it off. There is no longer fragmentation functioning in Tarkov. We tested it best we could, and despite shooting a few hundred rounds that have really high fragmentation chances, we didn't see a single indication of a fragment. Now, the stat is still present in the game, so I'm not sure if this is a temporary test or if it's more permanent move, but either way, it's how the game works right now. Now, the second thing is related to specifically how the new armor system and hitboxes change how we all interact in the game. This came with patch 14.0 in the white. Now, prior to this previous patch, this is essentially what we had right here. This is prior to 14.1. So between the wipe and the patch a month ago, if you got shot when you're this player that we're looking at right now is facing me, he's ADSing at my head. But this whole chunk, this whole section in here is all exposed thorax and not just anything. Basically, it had to be ammo that was 35, 40 pen, but that's a lot of ammo. That's your 545 BT 7 and 40 BP or your 556, uh, 8556 A1, 855 A1, as well as like 762 by 39 P, uh, PP or any of your normal uh, 762 ammo, the, you know, M80s and LPSs. If you took a shot here, not only did it hit your arm and damage your arm, it also went through and hit your thorax. Now at that point, if even if you have class three airmen, it's gonna go through it. There are there are two armors that are class four that cover that part of the thorax, uh, the, the two lay rigs. Um, there are two class four airmen armored rigs, the lower level ones, but that's it. No plates cover this. And on top of that, this little red sliver in here is your armpit hitbox which has no coverage. So if they snuck a shot in there, it didn't matter even if you had the class four armors on, it was gonna do, you know, your 40, 50, 60 damage to your thorax with one bullet. And there was nothing you could do to stop this. So this led to what I believe was the incredibly inconsistent experience in gunfights we were all, I don't wanna say getting used to, but experiencing. You know, we've all done it. We've, we've shot a player six, seven, maybe 10 times with decent ammo and they still didn't die. But then other times a panic spray would drop them so fast, you weren't sure you killed them. And even when you did, you thought it was a headshot, but you get to your end of raid screen and it was a thorax. And you were like, that guy died so fast, I thought I headshot it. And then this happened to you as well on the other end. You've been surprised by sometimes you'd have somebody mag dump you and your limbs would be screwed up, but you were pretty well alive. Your thorax wasn't that jacked up and you were able to heal and get back into a fight a little bit later. While other times a scav, would one tap you with a lead slug or some other crappy ammo and with no warning. You know, you'd be 30 seconds into your shoreline raid and running through a bush and you wouldn't even hear a yell and you'd fall over dead to one shot from an SKS scab. Yeah, that's very specific, I, I know. But don't act like you didn't have it happen to you. So all in, these changes, I believe, are going to prolong fights and even out the TTK a little bit. Changing from this, where your arm is impenetrable, where your arm is penetrable, to a system like we have here where exaggerated, yes, but your arm is impenetrable, it adds that extra bit of an armor in an area that wasn't armored. So while this seems like a janky fix or a temporary patch, it might actually be an improvement even with its downsides. I can't say for sure that this is going to inherently increase TTK yet because there's so many factors that play into this with headshots and different angles and surprises. Only time and experience is really gonna play that out. But what I think it's going to do is really remove a lot of those outlier deaths where you seem to just get folded like a paper bag regardless of what armor you had on. And just to tie a bow on some of the testing here, I wanna show some of the clips of us testing the neck hitbox, the head hitbox, and the thorax hitbox so you can see for yourself and you don't just have to take my word for it. Uh, okay, you guys line up behind him here. You guys are like goalies, you gotta catch the bullet. 
This good? I think so. All right. Quit moving. All right, Morty, verify that's a head and neck when you die, please. Oh. Now we just got to verify that's a head and neck. Good catch. F. Same deal. Oh, my mom, I love her. That was the nape for me. That's but neck, it. right? It was nape? Nape, yep, okay. head and nape. Head neck. That so was it's head legit, neck, just, guy. It's just a legit fucking line. So it's 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 just a straight line. Everything up here is the head hitbox. Everything that in between is the neck. Head throat. That was throat, yeah. So that one was a little high. It'd be interesting to see if that's a neck or, or nape. So it's hitting right at the top of the pistol. It's sucked in from the jaw, like your jaw protru protrusion right there isn't a hit. That's fucking wild. The front of the face is though. Patch also brought in some other really good changes as well. And I think that they're gonna make the armor system a little easier to understand, as well as increase the number of viable armors for the players. So first up, several armors got buffed to level three from level two on their soft armor, the Aramid parts. The big ones to mention are gonna be the trooper. So you can see here, it's now class three and it covers the entire thorax, stomach, upper back, lower back. So while it doesn't have side protection, it is still a bit better of a protective armor and I think this actually makes it viable and usable again. The next one is gonna be a favorite for a lot of people, and that is the Baggerly, Baggery. I think it's supposed to has, I always said Baggerly, but I think it has an I in it. Yeah, there you go. I always thought it was an L, but I guess it's an I. Anyways, uh, it's also class three now. So it is another rig you can actually wear that has decent coverage. It's only lacking in the neck coverage and the fact that it uses kind of the less good Russian armor systems, because the material type and coverage that's for another video uh but again a viable i will use this now i stopped using this because it was class two aramid with it being three now i will use it and then the last one is kind of an unspected one and that is the m2 rig uh it's another plate carrier armored rig so you can use it when you're like trying to do your mountain extracts and things like that but it as well is class three now and it has good coverage including side coverage so just keep that in mind that these armors went from class two to class three aramids, which really changes how effective they are. Now there are others. They did make quite a few changes to these. Uh, one that didn't get the change and I don't understand why was the Karund. It is still class two. I don't know what this should be a class three aramid. I don't know why they didn't buff it oversight or they've got something else they're planning. Um, it just makes this not a very good armor with class two protection. But like, for example, the Tac Tech plate carrier got buffed to class three as well. The problem is, is it has terrible coverage. It doesn't actually cover the thorax hitboxes. It only covers the front and back plate. So while it does have aramid, it is the same shape as the plate. So it's actually skinnier than what you see on the character. And this was the case with a handful of other armors. So I'm not gonna get into it because you probably still shouldn't use them in my opinion. On top of this, they also modified how plates and aramid interact with one another. So first up, let's talk about the removable plates, right? The plates that go in the armor. Previously, before this patch, if a plate stopped a bullet, the bullet didn't penetrate, there was no damage dealt. Now this sounds super good, and I guess it is because there's no damage, but you got no feedback. What I mean by that is like, let's say you were in a firefight and somebody shoots you and five shots hit the plate and that plate stops all five shots, but their six shot hits you in the head and kills you. On your death screen, the only thing you see is that one shot that hit your head. The five shots that hit your plate did no damage to you, so nothing showed up on your death screen. Now, what happens is when the plate stops a, a bullet, it does have blunt damage to it. It's very small, but it's there. Now, this might sound like a bad thing, um, but it, it, for the most part, it's not impactful in your fights. Uh, if that you're not gonna die because of the blunt damage versus not having it. But what you're going to get now is feedback. And that is important for perception of players on what they see and what's going on around them. 
More feedback, more information leads to less confusion and generally a better feeling about the fight. Now this blunt damage is affected by everything from the armor class to potentially the material, though I'm not 100% sure about that, and whether you have Aramid behind the plate or not. So what I'm saying is, is for example, when we shot 556 FMJ on a class four poly plate with a level three Aramid backer on it, it did between three and four points of damage of blunt damage when it didn't penetrate. Whereas if I went to a class six poly plate and class three Aramid behind it, it only did one damage or did less than one damage actually, it was like 0.8. So the level does impact how much blunt damage goes through. On top of that, the Aramid level impacts it. So if you have a plate with no Aramid behind it, like because your Aramid zeroed for some reason, or because you're running one of those silly plate carriers that doesn't have Aramid, the blunt damage is much higher. It, like probably more than double, kind of hard. We didn't really test the number specifically, but it was a lot more. I was seeing six, seven, eight points of blunt damage when the plate stopped it. Whereas when you threw it with the Aramid, that was reduced to three or four. And class three Aramid reduced it more than class two Aramid. So it all kind of adds together. On top of this, as discussed in the patch notes, removable plates reduce damage and penetration of rounds when they penetrate the armor. Now this was always the mechanic of Tarkov until like February or end of January, whenever they did a patch. And I don't think it was intended. I think it was a bug, but they listed it as a change. So I'm not gonna get into the semantics of it. Where we're at right now is that if you shoot a plate and penetrate it, that bullet is going to have its pen, the, the bullet that passes through the plate is going to have its penetration and damage reduced. So that means that there are windows where you shoot a class five plate and penetrate it, but don't get through the aramid if it's class three underneath. And we had several instances of this, those class five plates and class three aramid stopping 545 BP, even though the round penetrated the plate. And we saw this repeatedly with class four plates and various other pen levels of ammo as well. Now to the helmets, because some interesting things are happening up here as well. First off, they reduced the size of the ear hitbox when looking at someone face on. Before, the hitbox stuck out pretty much on par with where the ears of the character model were. This meant that if you took a shot in the ear, even a glancing shot essentially from face on, you died because, you know, we all know losing an ear or getting it pierced is a fatal event. But I'm happy to say, that this is no longer the case, sort of. You can still get hit in the ear hitbox from face on, but it is much more difficult to do now and it's much skinnier. It's just a tiny sliver versus what was essentially a Dumbo ears. So great news there. There are a few minor bugs though with the helmet layering and it's pretty interesting, but not really game breaking. It has to do with how the layering is ordered, if you will or how the game sees the layering when it checks the armor. Right now, if you put on a skull mask and glasses, the glasses are essentially outside of the skull mask as far as the game is concerned. So when I shot the guy in the face with rip ammo, the glasses would take damage, but the face mask would not, as long as the glasses stopped the bullet, which they did most of the time. Sure, not super weird. You could probably even argue that that's the way it's supposed to be and it makes sense because the glasses would be outside. But the, the glasses and masks are counted as top of the face shield for the exfil helmet as well. So explain that one to me. So right here, when I shoot rip ammo, the face shield takes no damage, but the glasses and face mask do. This specifically didn't happen on any other helmet we tested, but the airframe chops are layered under the mask as well. So keep that in mind. The mask will take damage before the chops will, obviously depending on the ammo. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in the patch in regards to armor. There is so much more info to go over, but this video is already drug on for too long. But before we wrap it up, I wanna say thank you again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember, it is out for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And by using my link in the pinned comment or the video description, anyone new or anyone returning for more than six months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms, including multiple premium vehicles and other goodies that are available for a limited time only. So make sure not to miss it. As always, thank you guys for watching. I wish you the best of luck in your raids, and we'll see you in Tarkov.